How's it going guys? In this video, we are going to be talking about how zinc and hydroxychloroquine might be a possible COVID-19 treatment. And we're gonna first look at what's happening inside of one of your normal cells that has not yet been infected by the coronavirus. And so inside of your cells, you have a nucleus, and in this nucleus, you have DNA. DNA's job is to store the genetic material, the information to code for proteins that your cell needs to survive. And so what happens inside of your nucleus is this DNA is transcribed into RNA. RNA is single-stranded. And what happens is this RNA will make its way out of the nucleus and into the cytoplasm. And then once your RNA is in the cytoplasm, things called ribosomes are going to jump onto the RNA and they're going to translate this RNA into proteins. And an example of a protein would be insulin, which is needed to maintain your blood sugar levels. And so this is what's going on inside of a normal uninfected host cell. What happens when your cell is infected by the coronavirus is the coronavirus has these things called spike proteins. These spike proteins have affinity for the ACE2 receptor. ACE2 is a membrane bound protein that is on site of your cells. It is inside of the phospholipid bilayer or the membrane, the plasma membrane of your host cells. And so what happens is these spike proteins are going to latch onto this ACE2 receptor and then a fusion event is going to occur. And so what happens during a fusion event is the membranes become one. So I'm representing the viral membrane in red here. And so what it's gonna look like is something like this where originally there were two separate vessels and now there's one and now the viral RNA is going to be able to make its way into the cytoplasm of the host cell and so once the viral RNA has made its way into the cytoplasm of your host cells the next thing that's going to happen is a ribosome is going to jump onto this genetic material, the RNA, and is going to begin translating this viral RNA into proteins. And a very critical protein that the SARS-CoV-2 virus needs to make in order to build its progeny is referred to as RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. And I'm going to draw that as a red square here. This is RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, or RDRP. And the job of RNA or RDRP is to replicate the RNA of the virus. And so it's going to go around, it's going to latch onto the viral RNA, and it's basically going to crank out a ton of copies of the viral genetic material so that it can put this genetic material into the viral progeny that will go and infect even more cells. And so what people have found in test tubes and labs is that the zinc ion is able to inhibit the function of RNA dependent RNA polymerase. So I will represent zinc as this dot here, this zinc plus plus ion. And so basically what this zinc plus plus ion does is it jumps and interferes with RDRP to prevent it from synthesizing all of the progeny, all of the genetic material that is needed for the viral progeny. And so while people are thinking that's great and we now have a treatment or a cure for the coronavirus, the issue with this is that zinc is a very positively charged large ion. And if we were to look at the membrane of our cells, the plasma membrane specifically, the membranes really don't like letting big positive or negatively charged things into it because they're called phospholipid bilayers. And what this means is that they're very hydrophobic and they don't like things that have charges to them. So like a bouncer at a club, they're going to push the zinc out. So if you were to just take a bunch of zinc supplements, the issue is that while you now have a lot of zinc in your blood because it diffuses, because it's so aqueous, you're gonna have tons of zinc on the outside of your cells but the issue is that the zinc cannot get into the cells because it's too large to make its way through the plasma membrane. And so that's the reason why it's not as simple as just let's give everyone zinc. What needs to happen is we need a way to get zinc into our cells. So we need a zinc 
transporter and zinc plus plus just means it has a plus two charge a zinc plus plus transporter and the reason for this is we got to get through that plasma membrane of your cells and so that's where hydroxychloroquine comes into the picture because hydroxychloroquine is also referred to as HCQ and sometimes people call it a zinc ionophore and so zinc ionophores, which is a class of drugs, are able to basically get zinc into your cells. And so there's two key questions that we still have to answer here. And the first one is, number one, what is the therapeutic dosage of zinc? And this is a very critical question that we have to answer because zinc, if we give people too much, has been shown to result in people being unable to absorb copper into their bodies. And this will lead to a bunch of other side effects that could potentially be fatal. So we need to figure out what is a therapeutic dosage. And in addition to that, what is a safe transporter? And while hydroxychloroquine, which has already been demonstrated and used in medicine for decades, has been shown to be safe, we don't know how it's going to behave when we need to use it on people who have COVID-19 and we're trying to get massive amounts of zinc into them. So this combination of small molecules is something that we have to study very thoroughly and be very careful in. And there are currently clinical studies going on to figure out how can we do this and what is safe because the last thing we want to do is end up hurting people even more. So once we are able to answer these two questions, figure out what is the correct intracellular, meaning within the cell dosage or the concentration of zinc that we should have in order for the zinc to effectively inhibit RNA dependent RNA polymerase so we can stop the viruses from replicating themselves inside of infected cells. And then once we also figure out what is a safe transporter to get the zinc into your cells, then we'll be on the right track. So another very important thing that people think of now is I should go run to the store and buy out all the zinc. And this is also not a good idea because even if you were to take tons of zinc, the zinc again is just going to be on the outside of your cells with no way to get in. And in addition to that, because zinc is so water soluble, your body is basically going to get rid of most of it and you would not end up with anything, any therapeutic effects taking huge supplements. The key thing to make note of here is if you keep taking the recommended daily dosage of zinc, then your cells will have the normal amounts of zinc that they are supposed to have in them. So when they do become infected by the coronavirus, or if they do, you have some zinc floating around that can inhibit RDRP, which should prevent the further infection of new cells. So that is going to wrap things up for this video. I hope you guys find this stuff useful. Let me know if you have any questions. Please stay safe and wash your hands, and I'll talk to you next time.